Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Prophet James Stell in the house with Thine Kingdom Come Ministries. And uh, I'm kind of debating on making this a part of Food for Your Journey or seeing what the Holy Spirit leads or something about making it into something new. It definitely is something new, ain't it right? Is that right, yeah. babe? So I got my lovely queen sitting over here on the side of me. And you know, the Lord is pressing our heart you know, and confirmed it plenty, many times, even in our spare times that, you know, one of the main things that a lot of issues, one of the main issues that a lot of people are going through right now is relationships. <laughs> you know, relationships got a lot of things that, and, you know, we just want to kind of start sharing nuggets on, you know, just common sense nuggets that sometimes say may seem, uh, you know, you've heard it before. I believe you're going to hear what we're going to say a lot before. I don't think it's nothing new. The Bible says ain't nothing new under the sun. But uh, some things that you probably need some remembrance on, especially dealing with relationships. You know, I know we are married and we are embarking on our, this month, make our fifth year anniversary. Can you believe that? She's she going to kiss me no matter what. I ain't. <laughs> and she can do that because the Bible says. That my body is her body, is her body, is my body. <laughs> so we just want to just have fun with you and be serious with you as well, <laughs> because this is no this is no joke and matter. I mean, with the divorce statistics as high as they are, you know, on the cool, it's beating, it, it, it's going against the grain of what society is saying right now. A lot of the, and yes, we do believe in the traditional uh, of marriage. I mean, we believe in the biblical tradition of marriage, you know, of where it state where it states what the Bible says, uh, all over throughout. But word for word, it says, "For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the they two shall become one flesh." So we're gonna break expound on that a little bit. And then go further and further, see how the Holy Ghost lead. But I'm super excited about what's going on, and my wife is excited because, you know, I'm, I'm happy that she's off. She's been she's been in the back doing a lot of the media all the time with a lot of this here. She so she's not been on the forefront, but she's been in the back handling her business, y'all. I get, I'm telling you, she been she been a trooper in this, and I love her for that, and I thank God for her, and I'm glad she's my mate, and I wouldn't marry nobody else. But her, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, when I say that, when I pause, reason I pause is that both me and her have been married before. You know, we have been married before. So, uh, and we've learned a lot from our mistakes of marriage, you know. And we learned a lot, and we're steady growing as we have learned that we can talk about it, be transparent. We want to be transparent with you to where we can talk about things you know, not get too graphic, but you know, sex is a part of marriage. You know, if it wasn't for sex, one thing about it, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> Our kids wouldn't be here. You know, nothing would be as it is. Existence would be none. So that has to be even a part of this as well. You know, uh, so what well, we're going to start out with, let's start out with some prayer. Okay, baby, you ready? Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that this, these nuggets, this this format, this that you're doing right now, this new thing, God, we pray, dear God, that you just come in and bless it. Mm -hmm. God, God, help somebody out in this here thing, God, called life, God, and dealing with relationships, God. Lord, I pray, dear Father, that this can be some ice breaking. I see in the spirit realm, ice breaking. I don't know, that's what I see, baby. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when somebody making a sculpture or something, they got that mm -hmm. stick right there and they chiseling. they chiseling, just chiseling and knocking. I'm seeing little flakes just falling all over the place. You know how they go? Mm -hmm. And so I see that this is going to be the start of something like that in a lot of people's lives and relationships because they need this. Mm -hmm. Shoot, we need this. We needed this before we can be doing this. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you get all the glory and honor and I definitely all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. amen. Okay. Amen. So let's just expound right quick over this right, over this, this scripture right here. 
In this scripture, it says right here that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, and it says this, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Okay. So, the thing that got my attention reading this is the man part. The man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a man. Marriage is a man and woman. I mean, I know they got a lot of new stuff going on right now, and I we not haters of that. But we go, our belief system is sticking with this. You know what I'm saying? And so it ain't no homophobic or no kind of phobia stuff right there. We got plenty of people that gay people that are friends and, 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 and such. You know what I'm saying? That we communicate with. We still love them. We still love them. That's right. Yeah. But the thing is, the maturity thing about being mature is about knowing how to agree to disagree. Agree to disagree and not be booty hurt behind it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not here to change you and you're not here to change me. And just as with my wife, you know, the first thing that I, I told my wife, is, and I say this to other couples all the time, is that, and I even po posted it up on my Facebook page, that I'm not her daddy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not your mama. So do y'all understand that? And why do we say that? Why do you think that, that so we say, I said that, right? But why do you think I said that? What, what is so important about that, saying that? Why does that stand out to you? For me, it's an equality thing because with a parent, it's I do what you say. It's a subjection rather than a submission because I submit to you, but I don't subject to you. But I had to subject to my parents whether I agreed or not. And the same here is you don't control me. It's not a subjection. And the same vice versa is I can't get out of my place and try to emasculate you and control you by trying to be your mom. Words, wise words from the queen herself. <laughs> that's true because we a lot of people. That's what happened. You know, our differences is what make us. Man, I don't think it's sweet. You can't be a boy. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> Black and white, literally. You see the color we is, huh? That is just the surface. Our cultures, our belief systems, everything, the way we believe. I'm more, you know, not just a man, but the kind of man that I am and was and I'm growing into being better, that I was a very harsh individual. You know what I'm saying? I, that's, I, that's how I was, subjective, subjection, subject, you know, and, and that's how I always was. And I had that mentality for a while and, and even took it in a lot of my relationships. And just, and her, she is so smart, you know, and I ain't jealous of her smartness. You know what I'm saying? She is smart in her area. And I am smart in my area. You know, the differences is what makes the, the, the relationship unique. I heard a preacher say it like this one time. He said, when you say, I don't see color, he said, you really disrespecting God. Because God is the one that made people different colors. You know what I'm saying? So her color is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? When people start saying color ain't beautiful and stuff like that, I understand that they, they don't mean to be uh, 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 mean about it. They just trying to say that, you know, hey, man, I want to see people as equal. You know what I'm saying? But uh, 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 we, we, we opposites, man. Opposites most seriously attract. And the thing about this also, guys, us being men, let me talk about us. Me and our weaknesses is in our eyes, man. Our eyes is our weakness. You know, we looking at the other women and looking and going all by like that. Even when you married and stuff, I'm sitting up there act like that you are a Holy Ghost filled. Yo, you ain't that saved yet. You got to go through trials and tribulations. You understand? But the thing is, is about that. The key is, is that through. You know what I'm saying? You are. You're a man and you're a flesh. But right here it says, here's, here's the issue. 
When I read this the other day, baby, it said that a man shall leave his father and mother. You can leave ment uh, uh, physically, but that don't mean you ain't left. Mentally. Or what? Spiritually. Yeah, or Emotionally. What? Or emotionally. All those leaves, you know, just because you left. It's some people that's in their marriage and they're comparing their mamas and daddies to their wife and tearing up their relationship. Right. You understand? They, they, they comparing. Comparisonitis. That's why leaving, to, when you to leave, you got to be able to continue to be peeled off of all of that doctrine and all that structure of what you was of that made you a man. Another thing about a man too is that he is leaving from a single mindset mm -hmm. into a marriage mindset. Two totally different mindsets, and you should. That's why it's so very vital of the information you get from people in relationships that are single, because their point of view. Could be is very opposite from being married. Because marriage is a covenant. It's a covenant. So a covenant means this here. The word covenant means marriage. Now, I was looking off in this here. The definition, the Greek definition to the word man, yeah. is this here. It says that it's a. Uh, To, is uh, 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 right there anyway. It's called anthrop anthropos. It says that man faced a human being, a certain man. That's what that means. So a human being, it says a human being can be a male or a female. You know what I'm saying? So even a female gotta leave a lot of her doctrinal stuff behind that she was raised as well. Could that be the issue, baby? Could that be? Could you see an issue popping up with that? Very much so. What? Being stuck in tradition and not being able to become the one which is unique. Because your parents were unique on each side, and now you're supposed to become your own unique couple. But if you're so stuck trying to mimic someone else's uniqueness, and they're trying to mimic their uniqueness, you end up having a division rather than a union. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? You hear that? A division instead of a, a union. union. You'll have a division instead of a union. <laughs> and another, that's right here. And it goes, it says, and I like this because it says to go to, uh, the count, right here it says to 3700. It's another, dealing with biblical, uh, what's the name, uh, 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 concordances, it goes by numbers. And I like what it says. It says right here. Which is used for it in certain issues right here. Mm -hmm. It denotes simply voluntary observation. Remember I said our weaknesses in our eyes? Mm -hmm. Voluntary observation, which expresses mere mechanical, passive, it expresses merely mechanical, passive, or casual vision. So it's saying it's markable. It says to gaze with wide open eyes as at something remarkable. That's the way our gaze have to be with our wives. And, 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 and let me tell you something. It can't be like that from a physical standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen a lot of uh, beautiful women or sexy that the world will call them. And they can't stay with a man for over a year. You understand? And then for those that they talk about it's not as society's mere model woman, they be with their man 20 and 30 some years. Because marriage is a process mm -hmm. to become one. Like she was saying, the division in the union, your union, I like what you said that, man, because you got to figure out, the Bible says a house divided against itself should not stand. Mm -hmm. So, what you saying right there, what I got from what you saying is that I got to look for the divisions that may pop up in us. We got to be right. mindful and alert 
that we live, this flesh that we live in is all about dividing and conquering. And Jesus is about the opposite. And God is about the opposite of unity and peace. Mm -hmm. So we have to every day wake up that this is how I look at it, that when I start acting selfish, put like this here. First of all, let's go back a little bit. My wife is my best friend. Yeah. Okay? She's my best friend. I'm her best friend. We come to that agreement that we are best friends. Mm -hmm. I knew that when I married her, that this woman right here is going to be by my side. I've been with, been with other women and girlfriends and all of this. And there was still something on the inside right there that was saying, hey, but you know how we do. We'll be like, uh, Me. one of our biggest mistakes is right here. Trying to be in relationships through obligation and saying, well, it'll work out later. Or expecting change. That's it. It's expecting change, which sets you up for an unrealistic expectation. Why is that? Say that. The unrealistic... The change, expecting change. Because it sets you up for unrealistic expectations. And you, but you expect people to change. You expect... I know it's bad now, but it's going to get better. Um, for an example, I don't like kids, for an example. Mm -hmm. But yet you want to have kids with this person, but they've already told you they don't like kids. Why would you expect what they've already told you is not? And they've given you the evidence thereof. Now you're set up for hurt because you have in your mind that they're going to change. They're going to never change. Yeah. You think they're going to change. I, I like to say it like this. Out of my first marriage, I, I, in my first marriage when I was married before, one thing, let's, let's, let, let, let's get this clear right here. One thing we both in agreement with mm -hmm. is that our first marriages we weren't supposed to be married. Right. I don't hear nothing right there. Yeah. We knew it. I knew it at the altar. There was no peace there. And you know what? The thing I had to realize later on about that, that being a man and mature is saying it's not her fault. Because the Bible tells us that Men, say that, you know, what's that straight when you like to say? Dwell with your wife, what? Oh, according to knowledge, according not understanding. To, and he says the man to do that. He didn't say the woman. The man dwell with your wife according to knowledge. And I knew deep down inside. But I didn't want to bump that. That money tree had a lot of money on it. Come on, let's just get real. People done flew all in and drove all the way here. The corn's hurting and everything. And I ain't going to tell them to take that potato salad back and that barbecue and, and all that. I'm not going to because I, then I start mixing and saying, it's, well, it'll get, like you said earlier, it'll get greater later. It will. It's just, just a bump in the road. Not knowing that that was God saying. The lack of peace was from him. So the key thing, so I want to ask y'all this, who, who you with, do you have peace that that's the one? Now, I ain't saying the storm's not going to come. I ain't going to say hard times ain't going to come because you got two different people that you're living together with. Two different people. Every day you wake up, it's going to be some differences there. Things are going to happen. But it should not be overpower the love that you have for one another. And what's love? What do what I mean by my love, baby? I mean, I want you, I want you, I want your entire best. I can see your entire best coming out of you. And that's all I want for you. Is your entire best. Mm -hmm. And I gotta realize that I am a part of that. That's the reason we together. We bring out each other's entire best. You know what I'm saying? And so. I want the best for you. You know what I'm saying? And I want the best for you at always. I want you the best clothes, the best ring, the best car. It ain't about those things. But when it got to do with best, and you have to, you have to, the women are fashioned in this world to need, uh, uh, to want to feel accepted. Right. You know? And they like things. 
It ain't that they worship things. They like flowers. They like their hair done. God made them like that. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I have God reminds me at times that go get us some flowers. Okay, I get us some flowers. You know, sometimes you have me step out on a limb. I ain't got enough money for this. But I'm going to tell you what God told me when I first got married, guys. I know we're kind of going sporadic -y right now, but it's all good. I think somebody's going to get something out of this. It, uh, he told me this. He said, in the book, Ephesians just said, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. I don't know if you understand what that love means because even the angels in heaven don't understand why Christ came down here and died for these people and got done like he did for us. You're going down there for them and they kicking you and beating you and doing it. Not saying she don't do that. <laughs> but I'm talking about the unconditionalness of the right. matter that knowing that this stuff is going to happen mm -hmm. doing, I'm still going to die for them. And that's the thing with my wife. I die for her and I know she'll die for me. I ain't saying that's what we need to do. They don't need an agreement but I'm just saying that's the kind of Love, the agape love that we have. So that's the, what everybody's supposed to when God is involved. So, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He said, you love your wife? Mm -hmm. The best of your ability. I'm going to take care of all the rest. Have he not and taken that's, care? That's been manifested for sure. Have he not taken care of all the rest. He, our yeah. needs have been met. We ain't had to go, man. Everything have been. Mm -hmm. But when you know you got the right one, that's the thing. Go ahead. I know something. I can see your eyes burning. Go ahead. Go ahead, love. That, that, going back to that knowledge, because you know that's, you were the one that introduced me to that scripture in. in First Peter the, chapter. Three. Yeah. And the revelation behind that. But, it, but according to, to knowledge because I am an emotional. I, I am emotional. You are not. Mm. Again, another one of our differences, which is good because it brings about that balance. But dwelling with that knowledge and not that understanding means he may not understand why I'm sitting or, you know, crying or something like that, but he knows. Or I may be, you know, kind of snappy one day. Um, a few days. No. <laughs> I may be snappy, yeah. but it, it's, he doesn't understand why I'm snappy. But he dwells with the knowledge that it's not an intentional meant to harm. Yes. Or it, it's not intentional digging. It, it's my tone of voice. It, mm -hmm. It's just that whatever it is that's going on mentally with me that he doesn't understand, he can still know that I'm there. Do y'all hear what I said, y'all? Did you hear what she said? That there are going to be times where you don't understand. That's me and always trying to fix stuff. We love to try to fix stuff. That's just how we don't. It, it frustrates us as men that we yeah. don't and we can't fix it because that's that daddy kind of side of us mm -hmm. that we got to kind of realize that. Oh, I can't fix my wife. I could be a good sounding board and let her. She wants to fix herself. She is a grown woman. She wants to fix herself. Mm -hmm. I can offer suggestions and information, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Because do y'all understand that? See, sometimes just because you take on the last name, let me just let's go back right here. And I always like to do this even in marriage counseling or relationship counseling, and really doing the marriage is this here. There's an I as well yeah. as a we. What do I mean by that, baby? Oh, don't, oh, don't, don't, take, don't, take, don't, 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 don't let everybody speak now. <laughs> don't let me interrupt you now, baby. You well, know? Like that, that is so self-explanatory that to me just the revelation of that statement alone was freeing. Because there was a freedom okay. in, in that, that statement for me. Because I was raised with so much of a there's a we only. Even worse, there's a you only is how I was raised. Was wow. It was you only. There was no me. There wasn't even a we. There was a you. How did you feel with that? 
some of us, the way you're saying that, expressing that, it seemed like that something didn't agree in your spirit the way it came out. What was it? No, it, did, it was just always something, kind of like you said earlier, just kind of in the back of my head that was like, this isn't quite right. Something's not quite right there. Um, and, and I tried in my first marriages that I, I tried to do that and it didn't work out. And I was, it was confused. And at, at first, when my first marriage, I was really kind of mad at God because I'm like, I, I subjected, I did what I was supposed to do. Why didn't this work out? But I didn't understand that subjection and submission are two different things. Okay. Shoot. Educate us. <laughs> what you mean? Because a subjection. Oh, deep and stuff. <laughs> I know. I'm running out of time for this one. But it, subjection is where there is no I. It doesn't matter what you say or what you do. You're right and it's your way. And that's it. But whereas submission is, I, I agree to disagree. And I'm vocal about that, but I'm not disrespectful about that. If that makes sense. Um, but I'm going to agree to disagree. You're still the head of the household. But I'm allowed to have an opinion. I'm allowed to, have, I'm allowed to be different. I don't have to be a copy of you. <laughs> so that I well, why do people? Me. Well, why do people turn into that? Like uh, uh, what you just said, being a copy of you. Really? It, well, hold on. Uh -huh. it, do uh -huh. you think that people that would, when the people sometimes, and I'm just asking from a woman's point of view, mm -hmm. that when they get married, that when they take on their last name, they lose everything else, or they don't, they forget that they are I. I, yes, I, I think that's part of it. it okay. And I think there's also a long-standing tradition, especially in my culture, that the women submit. Because women, I mean, you kind of go back and you start looking back just a couple generations, we didn't even have the right to vote. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that we had to be truly subjected unto the man. Look back at the 40s and 50s, yeah. 30s, 20s. You know, my own grandmother, she had to vote the way my grandfather voted. Mm. Everything she did had to be the same way as him. Wow. Or what? And she was under him. Now, now, was that subjected by him or was that the way that she wanted to it's vote? It's tradition. It's, it's the tradition. Tradition from her? From her. And, and I think from him, too, because women wow. are malleable. We are, we are made to be shaped. Okay. We are putty in your hands. So, as the man, if he continues to groom a woman into being um, a puppet, she's going to remain there. But, I mean, there's like, like with you and I, there's a point where sometimes I'll start to slip into that puppetness, you know, that, that whole there's a you, not a we, not even an I. And, and you kind of put that back in line. You oh, realize yeah. that, you know it. For real? Oh, yeah. You may not even real under realize you're doing it, but there is a point where it's just like a no, there's a we. No, there's an I. And by you maintaining that boundary, even just by maintaining the boundary and not allowing me to slide up too much under you, that still maintains the balance and the boundaries within our marriage. So do y'all understand what she's saying? She's not saying that I'm pushing her away when she gets too close. What she's saying is that uh, when she, when we're two different people, and she's saying that sometimes she can slip into. What let's put it like this: she won't want the word when we get the real word for it. Yeah. Idolatry. That's it. Idolatry. Women can idolize their man because of our stature and the way we hold ourselves. In a marriage and in a relationship, we are the ones that get have a lot of the men have the final mm -hmm. say. Uh, or you know what I'm saying uh, uh, or like not just the final say but you know what uh, in direction that's why the man is supposed to be the priest of the household and that's why let me go back to this right here and what you were saying in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 likewise ye husbands did you hear that husbands husbands man male husbands dwell with them your wife according to knowledge that means we're supposed to know what's going on in our household. Right. When we feel like something funny and itchy going on, 
We need to investigate. Now they're saying to be all jealous and go going through phones and and and, and uh, 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 putting new pin numbers and stuff and new username and passwords and all of that stuff. But when you got something, because you are one flesh, you should be able to feel something go wrong because y'all flesh of each other's flesh now. It's a spiritual thing. And that's crazy because I'm really my own flesh and you really your own flesh. But it says that's the, and that is the mystery I think Paul was talking about is that that it, uh, it's almost flip flop to the point of now you are one flesh, but what really a natural reality? How can I go to the courtroom for you? How can, how can you go for me and my and my and for me? You can't, cause we got two different names. But in the spirit realm, God sees us married people as one flesh. That's why it's important or who you fleshing up with. You understand what I'm saying? Some of us, we got, and we're going to a whole different uh, episode on this when we get to talking about soul ties and, 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 and trying to and remarrying and trying to get rid of all the old relationships. Because a lot of people don't understand about them spiritual transmitted diseases, not sexual through sex. Because just because you you know we are a body, a soul, and a spirit. Baby, but the thing is, is that we can mess around and get with the wrong person, and we wonder why. Man, you didn't have an anger problem till you got with her, or you didn't have an anger problem till you got with him, because y'all are exchanging each other's spirits. Woo-wee. Y'all worried about catching gonorrhea, but you ain't thinking about catching that anger problems, yeah. jealousy that'll lead to death. Suicide. Suicide. Depression. Say it again. Depression. Mm-hmm. We ain't even talking. But you transmit that in your sexual activities as well. Because why? We are a body, a soul, meaning our will, our choices, and we are spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people, if you ain't saved, you don't have the Holy Spirit, but you still are a spirit. That's why I'm talking to you right now. Because it's the spirit that keeps me alive. If I wasn't, I'd be in a casket dead like this here with no spirit in me. But because I'm alive, that tells me how I have a spirit. And those things, and I'm going to tell you how true it is, y'all. It's called, in, in easiest format, it's called, the word is influence. Mm-hmm. Influence. You can have a good day at work and be around the wrong crowd and be like, what the... I was having a good day till I ran into Mary Lou, uh, uh, L. Roy over there behind the boxes. He's in over there cussing and it got me cussing. You know, things like that happen because it's influence and that's power. That's why we got to. That's why the Bible says in the Book of Proverbs we got to guard our heart. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess this right here, I'm, I'm enjoying this. What about you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And she said that out of submission. Not subjection. <laughs> and I tell you what, I, I I love my marriage. I love it. You know, I, I, it's a flow and a freedom there. Everybody be talking about you married, you ball and chain. You might as well go get have your bachelor party and yada yada yada. No man, this has been the best move. If I could do it all over again, I would, this is my best friend that I would marry. All everything else was counterfeit, and not saying that to the person. But it was a counterfeit move that I take responsibility on my behalf that I made. You understand? See, and I'm going to tell you something. A lot of y'all out there that have been in relationships like that there, a lot of that, we, what we were talking about, y'all might need to go over this tape over and over. We got a whole lot more knowledge to give. And we're going to start doing this periodically now. You know, I see God, the Holy Spirit, leading us in this direction because there's too many relationships being being. Uh, like, just straight up destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So I say my people perish for lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge and still hold, trying to look at your future relationships through your past lenses. Mm-hmm. Right. That's one thing we knew we had to do different 
during this new mm -hmm. covenant. We have to get all, and it takes time to get all that old other old covenant up out of there. You understand? And everybody not going to agree with your marriage. They're not going to agree with how you do it because they're going to try to use the comparisonitis. But like I said, your marriage is your marriage. That ain't everybody else's marriage. They can give you some good information. They can give you some good tips. They can give you some, uh, you know, all kind of wisdom and mentorship, but they ain't you. Right. That's why you have to identify. When I say I, I as well as a we, mm -hmm. make sure that I am marrying you, not my mama's mindset in I marrying you, mm -hmm. or my daddy's approval mindset marrying you. Because that means I'm seeking conditions with you, and them conditions is going to pop out later on in the marriage some kind of way. Right. Right. Unrealistic expectations. That's going to come in and do what, do what it's supposed to, what it wants to do, which is to divide and conquer.